Hello, happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another episode of The Practice. My name's Stuart, and this show is an unrehearsed recording looking at my workflow in digital art programs like Cinema 4D and Photoshop. And this week we're going to have a little bit of fun prepping for Halloween and getting in the spirit a bit with a scary little skeleton head. Might continue doing Halloween themed things for the remainder of the month. I think maybe a jack-o'-lantern and there could be some other fun stuff. So let's prep for a scary October. Today what we're working on is a little skull character. As you can see here, we're starting off with the sculpt tool and a, and a capsule. And I'm just carving in some eyes, nose, some features like that. And a lot of times I'll make these faces just out of a big pile of primitives, but I want to continue exploring with the sculpting features inside of cinema a little bit more because they are pretty powerful. And when you're dealing with characters and, and organic shapes, uh, it's really, it's nice sometimes to, to break out the tablet and the pen and, uh, you know, have a little bit more of a, you know, sculpted feel to some of these things as opposed to just stacking primitives. But in, uh, proper diligence style. We are going to stack some primitives. So here we've got the eyes and the teeth going with just some spheres and some capsules, keeping it fairly simple. I wound up here having to use a subdivision surface because I was getting a little bit of a little bit of stair stepping and sort of a low poly look around some of these facial features. So wasn't killing render times too, too bad. So I decided to keep it here. We're going to use a cylinder. It's kind of short and fat and clone those along a curving spline to create a spine, a spline spine, if you will. Adding some fillets, rounding those out. Now this is not scientifically accurate. I forget how many vertebrae mammals actually have, um, perhaps more than this. But I think we're gonna be doing sort of a simplified uh, looking skeleton, so. No worries there. Adding some thickness to the lower ones. I think we're going to use a little bit of a fall off actually to have some of the thicker, uh, the thicker cylinders be in the middle. Now to add some ribs, sort of went in that overhead view, drew a little spline, and somehow didn't finish the whole thing so. I had to redraw it. And then we threw that in a simple sweep. This created this rib shape. Again, this is a simplified, stylized version, so we're only going to have a couple of ribs here. Symmetry object obviously does a lot of the work here for that. Now we're getting into the arms. Again, similar thing. We're just roughing out the basic shapes with some splines here. I found this a lot faster than, you know, if I want to make a series of splines, I'll just go ahead and, and draw them all out in one felt swoop before adding them into a sweep. Makes it a little bit faster. Then what I'll do is I'll just take a sweep, get the settings pretty close to how I'll need them for each of the uh, sweeps in that series. And I'll just sort of copy paste them and re-add the spline that we're sweeping along, which makes it a little bit quicker. We're sort of adjusting the placement of the axis on each of these to make posing a little bit simpler when it comes time to do that. Some shoulder blades here. I think these wound up actually not being super visible in the final view, but I did want to include them because uh, it'll give us a more realistic sort of view of the of the cavity. And now, speaking of not scientifically accurate, we're uh, 
You want to model the hands. Now, hands can be tricky to model in their best and easiest, um, and this is certainly not one of those, being that it's a, it's a skeletal hand. So I'm going to go ahead and take some artistic liberties here and keep things kind of simplified. So far we've just got a bunch of cubes that we've modified. We're throwing those in a subdivision surface so we get a little bit of rounding. Uh, and I'm just sort of creating what's the, the, what's the palm shape. I guess are those the, um, the carpels? What do you call those? Are they the metacarpals? I don't know. Continuing to model, again doing the sweep techniques where we're, we're drawing them all out and then we're copying and pasting that sweep over and over again on the, the various splines. Just kind of pushing and pulling, roughing the basic shapes out. Playing with the width there a bit and the details under the spline settings because if, if you get sort of a taper towards the center of that finger bone, it looks a little bit more realistic. And just copying these over, scaling them up a bit. And I was fairly happy with that. So I went ahead and copied it into the model, positioned it, threw it in the symmetry. And then we spent a few minutes here just kind of setting up the object manager and making sort of a hierarchy of these shapes so that we can uh, pose them a little easier when it gets to that time. Um, normally I would do this just by uh, placing primitives inside other primitives. Um, but when we're dealing with splines here, uh, you can't just go adding any other shape as a child of the spline, since you just need those, sorry, since as a child of the sweep, since you'll need those splines in there in a specific order to work. Uh, so I had to make a, a series of null groups. Nothing we can't manage. First it looks like he was uh, reaching out for a hug. But being that this is a skeleton and we're celebrating sort of this spooky season, this early autumn, I thought it would be fun to, to get his hands sort of together and cupped. And um, I'm going to have like, a, like him casting a spell. I'm going to have him holding this glowing ball of light. And I'll show you some cool, uh, a cool way to simply animate something moving around and growing and pulsing. Um, so we'll get into that soon. We're going to use the vibrate tag. And what I should say is, is um, since I wanted to pose these hands in a non-symmetrical way, what I did was I pulled those whole arms out of the, uh, out of the, the hierarchy there that I had them inside that symmetry. And I used the mirror tool under the character uh, options to uh, mirror those. And, you can also go in there and use the naming feature in that mirror tool and uh, designate one as the right and the left arm. And that allows us obviously to model them uh, and position them separately so that way they're not just you know intersecting each other. Now we got the basics of the model in place here so we're gonna we're gonna start that lighting. So here I'm gonna put an area light in between his hands with some visible light turned on so that we've got this sort of glowing effect and when that's going to do a few things one it's going to give us sort of a like a hazy glowing sort of look in the center of the uh, model here and it's also going to cast a lot of really cool shadows and give us some some really dramatic lighting on the the head and the, and the torso of the skeleton as well and the camera tweaking some of those settings getting that composition dialed in to a certain extent and yeah, evil skeletons need glowing red eyes. So let's get in there with that.
tweaking those positions. Adding some blue to that background. I was feeling a little kind of washed out and not quite dense enough. And here we go. What I did was I simply added a vibrate tag to that light, turned on scale, rotation, and position. And that's going to give us like a flickering and, and some motion and, and interest to this. And it's going to, you know, the, the idea is that the, this creature here is, is casting a little spell. So that makes it look as though he's got this kind of flickering ball of energy. And I felt to give him a more ominous tone, we're going to lean that head forward and, uh, you know, give ourselves a, a little bit more of an aggressive, menacing kind of posture to this creature. Also allows us to get the eyes in a position where it looks like he's sort of squinting or frowning. This boy needs to visit a dentist too, by the way. Now, so I felt as we were adding lighting and rendering this that it was a bit like his his head was a bit smooth, and skulls typically have, you know, little cracks and and um, details and bumps and bits to them. So I just went back into that sculpting tool and added a, a little bit of a, of a divot, a little crack, and some, some sort of bumps and asymmetries, which help the tone and personality of the guy a lot. Sometimes it's kind of boring if you have just this perfectly symmetrical and smooth character, and for someone who's a bit creepy, he needed a bit of uh, distressing and, and cracks on that skull. And sort of the, the final bit of the animation process here will be just to add a little bit of movement to the to the skeleton. I, I want him sort of eh, bouncing up and down a little bit, moving his arms a little bit. So it's just some very, very positional, a very, very simple positional keyframing. I'm uh, just moving the arms and the hands up and down a little bit. Since I do want to output this as an animated GIF, I'm keeping the frame count relatively low. I think this is just 20 frames. You're positioning the axis on the head group so that it's coming from the neck joint and that allows you to animate it much more realistically as if it's a neck. So here we're playing with some of the settings of that central light, making sure it's it's glowing and, and behaving properly. So I'm going to you know, do a bunch of test renderings here and sort of dial some of those settings in. One of the things I'm doing, instead of keyframing the, the, the intensity of the light itself, I'm just allowing the vibrate tag to grow it rather large so that um, the visible glow sort of shrinks and expands to occupy hardly any of the frame at all and then almost the entire frame itself. The other thing that's helpful for an animated GIF is you can turn on the regular loop uh, tag. You can click that button there inside of Vibrate and that's going to allow you to get a fairly, a fairly seamless loop. Um, since this thing is jittering around so frantically, um, it's not quite as important to make sure that lines up perfectly. We can get a, get away with a little bit more with the way that light's bouncing around. But a seamless loop should get us pretty darn close. Depending, of course, on your frequency. I'm liking sort of the hazy, uh, you know, very visible light that you're seeing there. I wanted to bring down the glow a little bit on those eyes because that was a bit strong. And now I'm really just going through and comparing the brightest point and the lowest point of the light to make sure we have a, some nice range, some variety there. At this point, I think we're getting fairly close. Handful of test renderings left. And we're just going to fast forward through the final frames.
wish my machine rendered this fast in actuality. Now we're just going to compile these frames quickly in Photoshop. Photoshop has some great features for just turning all your layers into a looping animated GIF. It makes it super simple. And we'll do just a bit of color correcting and, the, and we'll output the GIF and we'll be, uh, we'll be pretty set. Gonna add a little bit of additional glow there just to sort of help that central region out. There's this weird artifact that sort of appeared there, and obviously you can't stamp it out if the lighting's changing because all that uh, all that lighting's really going to affect the way it looks. But in the final GIF output, it wound up being not so noticeable at all. Here we go, dropping down to 128 colors, or even 64 here, yeah, just to get those settings right because this is a, a rather low color image after all, so it worked out just fine to do it this way. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to drop one in the comments below. If you want to keep up with me and the work that I'm doing, please check me out on Instagram at DLGNCE. And until next week, this is Stuart saying goodbye. Thanks.